Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to prep the transmission. We will be installing the clutch release plate, throw out bearing, slave cylinder, ball pin, getting it all on there and ready to go back in the car. All right, it is time for me to replace the clutch release lever. That's this thing right here. Now, most of what is on the Boxster S also applies to the base five-speed Boxster. However, this procedure with the Boxster S uh, only applies to the Boxster S and the 911, the 996-911. Um, the base Boxster is a little bit different. So if you have an S or a 996, you have the option of replacing the clutch release lever or as it's called in German, the Ostrachachdachl. It's all one word. Uh, I'm convinced that every car part in existence can be spoken with just one German word. Every time I order something directly from Porsche, it's always one word. English, this is a clutch release lever. German, Ostrachach. Oh my goodness. <sighs> anyway, this is the new clutch release lever. This is the clutch release lever that they designed for the 997. So the next model of the 911. And this is the old 996 clutch release lever that they put on uh, the 996 and the 986 Boxster S. The key difference is the way that this uh, rotating part works. So you'll notice that while this has a groove for this black piece to slide on, the new updated design doesn't have that. It just has a different hole for the pen to go in. So you throw out this black piece, throw out the old lever, go with this updated design and a new pen. You put a sealing washer on there like that. This clip right here goes on there like that and snaps like that. And that's assembled just like that. And you do not grease this joint right here. It just sits like that on the new pen. So here's the throw out bearing. In my old car, this throw out bearing was completely seized it wouldn't really spin at all. So it's a good thing that we're replacing this. Definitely check that. Most clutch kits, I believe, come with this because that is a common problem. All right, so it snaps in here like this. So we've got to grease these sides here. Now I am using a, a high temperature, high pressure grease. And that's what you need. You need something that's gonna withstand the pressures of clutch engagement and disengagement. It should also be extreme service or long life because obviously you can't really go back and re-grease this without taking everything apart. Now you notice I'm not applying lots of grease to this and there's a reason for that. If you get grease on the clutch disc, it ruins the clutch disc. So I don't want globs of grease sticking around everywhere and gumming things up. I just want it coated evenly in grease. So it's time to install the new ball pin right here. Again, we're not using that plastic piece that the old six speed transmission used. We're just installing this straight on there. The new ball pin is a 17 millimeter size. If you had a 17 millimeter deep socket, it would probably be perfect, but you can get it with a wrench, with a spanner. Now, once again, I'm gonna keep the ball pin clean. Next up, reinstall the guide tube. Now, uh, you can replace this, and you should if there's any signs of wear or binding from the guide uh, from the throw out bearing because this is where the throw out bearing slides. So you should just feel on it, feel if there are any 
irregularities, wears, scratches, things like that before you reinstall the old one. That being said, it is literally just a metal tube, so there's not a whole lot that can go wrong with it as long as <clears throat> it's not worn. Now, if you're reusing the bolts, be sure to <clears throat> put some blue removable Loctite on there. And once again, this is a T45 socket. With the guide tube reinstalled, I'm just gonna coat this guy with a thin coat of anti-seize. You can pick up anti-seize in just about any car parts place. And once again, thin, moderate coats are the key here. You don't want globs of gunk. Globs of gunk are the enemy in your clutch. So now, clutch release fork is ready to go on. And you'll feel it engage, kind of snap on at that point right there. And slide the throw out bearing on. Perfect. Just slide right on there like that. So I'm gonna install a new slave cylinder. There was a bit of squeaking back here and sometimes that's caused by a slave cylinder. You have to bleed the clutch line anyway when you replace the clutch. So it's a good time to replace the slave cylinder. I'm going to install the slave cylinder on the transmission with the transmission out of the car. I think that'll be a little bit easier and you'll actually be able to see what I'm doing because I know when I took it off, it's perched way up here on the left side of the transmission on the top and it's very difficult to see. So I have my new sax clutch slave cylinder here. And interestingly enough, on the package there's this warning not to install it naked with your bare hands. Germans, man. Apparently naked auto repair was a big enough problem for them to put this on the box. I don't have a pair of overalls, but I do have an enormous wrench and I'm not naked, so that should help. To grease or not to grease. I always worry about this because most people over grease things, but everyone that has done this job has greased the tip of the slave cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow along with popular theory, although I can't find an official source. Um, it's just mainly going off of what Pelican Parts says, and they've been wrong before. A couple times, actually, in just this clutch project. At any rate, put a little bit of grease on there. I'm also going to lightly grease this here just to help it slide in. So as you can see, it's just held on by one bolt. I'm going to put some blue removable Loctite on the bolt since I'm reusing the bolt. And this gets 23 Newton meters of torque or 17 foot pounds. This plastic cap is where the hydraulic line attaches. I'm gonna leave the plastic cap in there until I'm ready to install it because I don't want dirt getting in there. This right here is the bleeder valve that I keep talking about. And I am gonna open this just like that by loosening it. It has to be open when you install this because the slave cylinder will be compressed and it won't really be able to be compressed very well with the bleeder valve closed. You're gonna have a really hard time compressing it. So leave it open when you're installing it. And that's ready to go. Now I can, with it installed, but the transmission out, I can also make sure that the pen on the slave cylinder is properly making contact with this part right here of the clutch plate. So 
this should be ready. Everything's back in here. This is on, this is basically ready to go back on the car. We'll grease these spines, uh, but we're gonna do that only once we're ready to install it because I don't want grease on there getting dirty. Thanks for watching. Uh, at this point, there are just a couple videos left in the series. Uh, all the footage is shot and it's just a matter of me editing it together. Next up is installing the flywheel and clutch. And then after that, pretty much everything is straightforward. I'll probably put together one video about reinstalling some of the transmission exhaust type things, but that's pretty much just the way it came off. And I'll also put together a video reviewing all the special tools I made, because I made several. And then I will be done with the IMS project. So look for those videos coming up, hopefully soon, uh, if I stay editing things. And then after that, we're gonna be replacing the spark plug tubes, uh, changing out the booster spring and bushings for the clutch pedal. Finally, doing the get out and drive video, which I've been kind of half working on for a while now. And then hopefully my first actual performance upgrade for my Boxster. So I'm pretty excited about that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you around.